Notion have a brand new feature out and it's called Home and it allows you to do a range of different things, centralizing your workspace into one location to access popular pages and your task database. We're going to show you how that works and how I believe it's step one into killing databases. Hello everyone, my name is Francesco. Welcome to Keep Productive. Uh, if you're new, do subscribe. And if you are interested in Notion news like this and you want it into your email inbox, you can subscribe to Notion news below. It's already got 5,000 people subscribed and you can naturally get the beat of Notion every single uh, big release uh, to your inbox straight away. So do check that out below. So I have naturally uh, been very excited to check Notion Home out. It's a very interesting experience and essentially it's very much to Evernote Home uh, where you get widgets and you can essentially organize uh, a like a home page of your most popular stuff. But there's not too many widgets for now, but it's a good starting point. Now, inside of this area, you can find recently visited popular pages, trending pages per team space, and a really powerful function called My Tasks, which essentially takes one of your databases and essentially pins it to this area, allowing you to really refine it of the tasks you need to do. You can even set things like um, uh, sorting, filtering, so you can have any tasks you need to do today. And every time you go to the homepage, it will obviously update it and keep it most refreshed. So a homepage essentially becomes your starting point inside of Notion. And it is really looking good. It's a really good first step for Notion. And that's why I believe it's going to help support the future of Notion, which is a great first move. Now, there's a few additional things you can do. You can change your nickname at the top to anything you like, and that will show across a day with good morning, good afternoon, whatever you want. Recently viewed pages will pop up at the top as little panels. You can change that as well as the My Tasks area and the Suggested For You. Suggested For You obviously pulls the information that you're tracking with uh, Notion and brings up suggested stuff that you would commonly click on potentially at the time of that. And then you've got trending as well. In the bottom right hand corner, many people won't notice, but there's an uh, Ask AI function still is populated on the homepage too. So why do I believe that this will kill databases? Now, in the long run, this is a conversation that is over three to five years. And it is a lot of different things. It's not just AI, it's spatial computing and also uh, the, the potentiality of a, a voice AI as well, uh, being a proponent of your work management. So what I'm about to explain is something that spans probably not just in the short term, but the long term as well. And why I believe this is going to be looked back on in the future as a first step, even though they probably don't know it is. So this conversation actually sparked when I wrote an article that was about the future of Notion, where I discussed some of the future products I believe Notion will come out with, like Notion Mail, Notion Whiteboards, as a next step in Notion's multi-product lineup. But I also discuss the element of databases being killed. And what I want to start with is the artificial intelligence side. And one of the problems I've had for Notion for probably three to four years now is that databases are wicked awesome in terms of creating the perfect productivity block that you want, but they are also detrimental, I think, to the future of AI in Notion because it's different to other productivity applications. Let's take a look at a note-taking app, a to-do list app, and a calendar app. The core elements of what you add, you know what they are, and AI in the future will know what they are as well. A calendar entry will be <laughs> related to a calendar entry. Uh, a task is tickable and clickable and understand what it is when you add it. And the same with a note as well. This, whilst the context is different in a note, you'll still be able to understand that that is something that you want to refer to later and is documentized information. So with those core components, databases can be pretty much anything. Now, of course, you may have the ability in the future to scan a database and understand it. But this is where I believe databases can potentially be an issue because the AI might not know what it is going to be about. And that's where I believe in the future for the complexity side, Notion will probably scale back uh, their mainstream product for databases so that they create the, the actual core database for you so that it is in line with what artificial intelligence needs 
to understand what the task is for the job. Now think, in five years, Notion will probably organize your day. Notion will probably organize your um, your wedding. <laughs> it can literally uh, be very flexible as a tool. And for the databases to be progressive, it needs to be able to understand what those core components are. And we can see that with Home. For example, if we had um, little areas or little spaces inside of our home that can be pre-populated and understood what the database is without any manual interruption, then that could be completely beneficial to us. For example, maybe you're going on a flight and there's a block or a widget in your Notion home that has your flight information and that you saved through email and it's automatically bringing up pre-flight uh, so that that's contextual information and the AI knows what it is. So that's what I mean when it comes to being able to sort of strip back uh, the information that you're providing to Notion. It, the understanding of the artificial intelligence. And the second uh, element of this is spatial computing, which I believe will be a very core cool component to the experience of Notion in the future. If you take a look at a driverless car, obviously at the moment, those driverless cars still have a steering wheel, they still have a clutch, they have still have an accelerator, and likely a brake, hopefully. Um, and in that same capacity, um, in the future, we won't need those functions and those functions will fall away and we won't think about them. Uh, there'll be more space to move around in the car. And in that same capacity, when we look at spatial computing in the future, um, when a experience is up on uh, the display you're looking at and you're using your fingers to manage that display for work and pro probably at home in this case, a database with a complex and vast array of features and uh, information will not be helpful to the job at hand. We need the thing that I was probably talking about is widgets, experiences that contextually move with us in the workplace and for our personal lives. The manualization of databases will die and the administration that we formerly did will become maybe even a mindfulness habit in terms of us not doing it for productivity, but doing it for mindfulness in that same sense. And that finally brings me on to that final component of voice AI. Um, obviously, one of the biggest things that we have been doing with our uh, management of Notion is with the keyboard and with our, um, our, our, our mouse as well. And those um, peripherals, I think, will change to um, being able to interact with it with your hands. And finally, voice, which will be, I think, the new mouse. And this voice artificial intelligence, very much like um, Iron Man, needs uh, some context to what those things that you're interacting with is. If it's a database that you have that's just titled something and you have some information in it, that might not be enough context for the artificial intelligence to truly understand what it is. So being able to strip back the databases and bring it back to the core uh, object studio that they build in the background to this will be something I think is fundamental to Notion's growth. So the way that I see this happening is largely Notion will probably roll this out in the workplace uh, in the future. Obviously, I don't know any information, but this is my predictions and where I think it's going. Now, you're probably wondering, Francesco, these are mental claims. <laughs> and actually, I have had these claims for about three or four years. Um, I've written about modular productivity software, and I normally think within that window of like three to four years in advance when I look at tools. So in, in 2019, 2018, I was talking quite a lot about artificial intelligence and how I believe the next phase of um, productivity software will start to kill the manualization of it. Um, so that's where I believe my thoughts are on the space. And we have to think as well that productivity software largely isn't going to be about organizing yourself. It's going to be about doing more. So when we put that in mind, we think about the different ways that uh, at, uh, it can activate a task or maybe even manage a system 
for us as agents versus uh, us doing the work at hand. But our core interest comes from decision making and creativity. So when you think of it like that, I've got to make decisions about what information I'm presented with, or I've got to make creative direction about that information I'm presented with, then that changes your perception of productivity software as a whole. So um, obviously take this with a pinch of salt. Um, when I say killing databases, I mean in, in very much long term. And I was in a fantastic discussion with Thomas Frank and August Brandley about this, who are both really respectable, well-renowned Notion experts. And their points that they were making largely I 100% agree within the short term. Um, but in terms of the long term, I still haven't changed my opinion in about four years on this, uh, this move. And the main reason it's so prevalent with Notion is primarily because Notion is such a complex system in terms of what it's trying to offer. It's a very flexible modular tool. So we need to keep that in mind um, in terms of why I bring this up in comparison with other productivity tools. The same issues will probably be found with other applications like Coda, Airtable, and many more. So my opinion extends across them all, but of course, Notion is something that I've talked about for some time now. Now, obviously, I'd love to hear your comments and opinions, and if you're interested, you can join in the conversation. I will link the article below that I mentioned about where I believe Notion's future is going, so you can have some more context. But hopefully, I think I've outlined where I believe everything is heading as a big picture. This is a big video, so at the same time, it's an opportunity to dissect it, and I really want to learn how you view this and from other opinions in the productivity space as well, because I'm growing my own opinions at the same time too. So it's really always so nice to hear how I can shape my opinion at the same time. So no, <laughs> Notion Home's out. <laughs> That's the, the ball down to it. But I thought I'd talk about that sort of interesting topic that has been on my mind for many, many years. Um, so Exciting future for Notion. I think this is a really great new re addition to the lineup that Notion has. If you are interested, folks, you can subscribe and check out Notion News. But a pleasure as always, and I look forward to reading all of your comments. Thank you very much, and cheerio.